Hi friends, welcome to Netset OS. I am a GCP certified data professional and I will tell you about the features that are in Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure and Amazon Web Services. Therefore, you can choose which cloud is best for your requirements. Today we will learn why cloud and which cloud form is best. But the main contenders are Google Cloud Platform, Microsoft Azure and Amazon Web Service. So why cloud? The first question arises in our mind. We have not learned about cloud like 10 years back. There is no cloud. But why we are adopting the cloud? The adoption of cloud computing has quickly became a key driving force for businesses today. As applications are moved out from on-premises data centers in a bid to innovate, cut costs and increase agility. So there are three different terms that are used in clouds. One is IaaS, another one is PaaS and another one is SaaS. So what do we mean by IaaS is infrastructure as a service. Another one is platform as a service and third one is software as a service. We will learn all these things in detail. So what is IaaS? IaaS is a model where a third party provider hosts and maintains core infrastructure, including hardware, software, servers, and storage on behalf of a customer. This typically includes the hosting of application in a highly scalable environment where customers are only charged for the infrastructure they use. So suppose why the cloud is popular. Suppose Flipkart is having a big billion day or Amazon is having a Diwali sale. So they need more servers at the time of Diwali or at the time of new year only. But if there is no cloud or if there is no IaaS, then what they need to do? They need to purchase the servers. And after Diwali or after new year, when the load becomes very low, so all these servers will not be utilized properly. So they will just take servers for one month max or for 15 days for New Year and Diwali and then return it back to the service provider. So in this way, they save lot of money. So there were earlier some concern over security and data sovereignty have largely been addressed by the three public cloud vendors, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud Platform with only the most heavily regulated business continuing to treat carefully when it comes to the adoption of cloud services. So what do we mean by those businesses like healthcare or sensitive data companies like NASA or Pentagon or companies like I must say pharmacy companies that are very particular about their data. So what has happened now? There is a competition between Google Cloud Platform, Microsoft Azure and Amazon Web Services. So I will go through why I have chosen Google Cloud over the other two platform and what is the market share of Amazon, Microsoft and Google. So why cloud? The maintaining of the server is bulky. That's what I have already said that when big billion day sale or when Diwali sale or when new year sale came, they will use the servers and then they will return it back. So there is unlimited infrastructure that they can use. So why everybody is going after the cloud? Why cloud is a buzzword? So one thing is also machine learning. Suppose if you want to run a program of machine learning, then you have to go to the market and buy a GPU system. And that is very costly. Very costly means more than two lakh rupees. And these type of calculations will run only for like half an hour. And then we can close the systems. That's why we use cloud. We do not want to invest into the infrastructure that we want to run for only half an hour in a whole day. What we will do, we will take a GPU from any of the cloud vendors like AWS or Google or Azure and return it back after half an hour. They will charge only for half an hour in this case. So that's why we are moving to the cloud. Now see the market, how much billions of dollar is being invested in the cloud infrastructure. So right now in 2020, we are at 110 billion dollars cloud market that will directly move to 126 billion dollars 
in 2021 and it will be approximately 150 billion dollar in 2022 so there is a very huge market in clouds that's why all the certifications and all the things are very important to this day so before moving towards the google infrastructure i must tell you about aws azure and google in particular so before moving forward i will just go through what are the pros and cons of aws azure and google cloud so first thing that came into our mind is aws so with a vast tool set that continues to grow exponentially amazon capabilities are unmatched simply unmatched yes its cost structure can be confusing and its singular focus on public cloud rather than hybrid cloud or private cloud means that interoperating with your data center isn't aws type priority so these are some of the pros and cons of aws it is one of the largest second one is microsoft azure a close competitor to aws with an exceptionally capable cloud infrastructure if you are enterprise customer Amazon speaks our language. That's why majority of the big companies are using Azure. Few companies have the enterprise background and Windows supports as Microsoft Azure. You still run a data center and the Azure platform works hard to interoperate with data centers. Hybrid cloud is a true strength. So we have covered AWS and Azure. Now comes our GCP. A well-funded underdog in the competition. Google entered the cloud market and does not have the enterprise focus that helps draw corporate customer, but its technical expertise is profound and its industry's leading tool in deep learning and artificial intelligence. I must tell you, they are best in the machine learning part in any of the cloud vendors. So now let's move towards the next. So what is the strength of Google? So now I must tell you why Google, why I have chosen Google as my cloud. So first thing is the network of cables. The Google has around 7,500 edge node locations and hundred of edge points in presence. And all these cables connect through cables that are going under the sea. And that kind of investment and that kind of infrastructure Google has created. And it bounds to be successful in any case. So there are every country in any of the continent is connected to google cables so what are all the google certifications that we can take so in future i will be going through all these certification in details so for present you can go for google cloud certified data engineer you can go for cloud architect or a cloud developer or a cloud engineer these certifications are very well recognized in the technical space in the enterprises and definitely they are boosters to your career also so now how the gcp is growing if you see this chart this is very well when we started in 2015 the share of google is four percent only it is increasing only six percent then it goes to eight percent ten percent twelve percent and fifteen percent while if you see the graph of amazon it is directly going down and it is eaten by azure as well as gcp so gcp has a great potential to become a master leader in future and if we talk about the revenue also so the revenue is also increasing at a very good pace in 2020 it is approximately 14 billion dollar in comparison to amazon 45 billion dollar i must say that amazon is the leader but the growing for google cloud so definitely i want to invest in google cloud Suppose I will give you an example. Now all the cars are diesel and petrol only. But if you want to invest in any stock, I will say it should be Tesla. GM or it should not be Fiat car, but it should be Tesla only because they are the innovators and they are thinking it differently. Similarly, GCP right now it does not have the market share, but they are the ones who are innovating in artificial intelligence and machine learning. So as you all know, data is the new oil. As you can also see in the enterprise public cloud adaptation, the Google stands with 19% now. So I must tell you what is the use of architecting a product on Google side or is it relevant to all the clouds and I will go through like what are the steps involved in 
professional cloud architect so first thing is design plan manage cloud solution architect so first thing that we have to design and then we have to plan the cloud solutions second one is manage cloud resources suppose in instagram if you want to store your images where you want to store the images how much resources needed to maintain these resources then design security and compliances what do we mean by design security and compliances our database should not be used by any tom dick and harry it should be used by the people who are rightly or who want to access it because they are compliance with the policy the fourth step is analyze and optimize technical business process what is the thing that how can we make our website more fast ensure solution operability so whatever solution we are giving they should be run on server and they should be scalable and they should be very fast so what is the role of cloud architect why cloud architect is needed so it's just not about creating and designing infrastructure but it is also about unauthorized access run away and hidden cost project resource halted due to improper blink setup application and service error that we do not know about and don't know how to fix it it all comes under the role of cloud architect so what is the resource hierarchy in gcp cloud so it is very simple as you are going to use your windows system or a linux system it is the same as we are using in google cloud system so simply what it means it will have a root folder and then it has like some bin folder boot folder def folder etc home lib media mnt folders so it's like a same linux directory structures that we are using in google cloud also so what is this each child have only one parent and permissions are inherited from above so if i have given permission to where folder so automatically all the folders all the permissions will also go to cache log spool and temporary folder also so we will all go deep dive into all these concepts and the lastly so it is also structured in the same way in a very standard way what it will do it will have a company so what does the company company can be like something oracle i have worked in oracle so i can uh, say that i know the internal technical structure also so like it will have like department x department y and shared infrastructure so department x you can say like accounts you can say as software and shared infrastructure can be related to like games or csr activities so like software can have two type of teams like team a and team b so, so team a means like erp based systems and it can be machine learning systems machine learning can have two products uh, product can be like anything like anything related to like predictions and team b can be working on some uh, research projects and similarly we can have test production based on the products so as we all know like dev environment production environment similarly like we can use resources at a very lowest level like compute engine app engine and cloud storage buckets so this is all the logical structure and this one is the actual implementation we can have our own compute engine app engine and cloud storage in google cloud so i will just give you a brief like what all things can be involved in google cloud for computing you can use app engine kubernetes engine cloud run and cloud functions and let me tell you they are very fast and they are very scalable they can have any amount of storages the next came the networking so how can we control the networking the networking part is very simple you do not need to create physical routers and all those things all these things are virtual only so vpc load balancers firewalls routes sub network cdn etc all will come into networking and they are quite easy and database there are three type of databases bigquery cloud data proc cloud firestore spanner speech api and other machine learning parts also like video intelligence so bigquery is sql kind of stuff cloud data proc is related to apache hadoop cloud firestore is a data store for mobile devices speech api is machine learning nlp and video intelligence is also our like when you are watching a video you want to find the emotions and all those things and it's quite popular now we came to resource management so similar thing that we have seen here this is the resource hierarchy that how we want our resources to be seen when we are doing a production or a development i am in security like which all people we want to give access and all those things will come under i am in security and automations like jenkins ansible deployment manager cloud formations devops and all those things come under automations
so this is a very brief introduction i am not going deep dive into all those things but certainly i am in process of making all those videos available to you so that it will be very easy for you to go through all the concepts so in the end i will just say that i have around 10 year of experience i am a google certified data professional also so you can ask any number of questions in the comments i will try to answer all the questions and trust me for the future this is the cloud